Looking for a budget resin printer? Creality enters the game with the LD002R. In the last year, there's been an explosion in resin 3D printers in the price range of around 200 to 300 US dollars. Now it seems every manufacturer is in the act, the market is saturated, and now Creality has an offering too. It's not actually their first with the LD001 and others on sale as well. But for this one, it seems to be a proper attempt with a whole lot more marketing. So here we are with my review, and we're gonna start by looking at the specs, unboxing, and setup. Let's explore the Creality LD002R resin printer. First thing up front is the price. At 270, it's a little bit more than a lot of other budget offerings, but I guess they're banking on their reputation. You will probably find it on sale cheaper than this sooner rather than later. Like most printers at this price point, it has a 2K resolution screen, which means a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels. The actual print size is 119 by 65 millimeters by 160 millimeters tall. The LCD also supports anti-aliasing. As we see on a lot of these printers, it has linear rails for the Z motion system, but something that does stand out here is air purification system. It claims to have double fans and an active carbon filtering system to deodorize the odor from the resin. The other key item here is the UV LED light source, and it features a two x two array with the aim of distributing the light more evenly. This printer was well packaged and was ready to go in five minutes because there's no assembly. Besides the printer, mine came with a scraper, a filter, a user manual, some gloves, and a face mask. Cooling fans are common for the UV LEDs in these, but the fan noise here surprised me. As you can see in here, the fans are on any time the power cable is connected, regardless of the main power switch on the front of the machine. My initial impressions were that this was a well-made and sturdy machine. The acrylic cover, tinted to block out UV light from pre-curing the resin, looks injection molded and is extremely sturdy, with a wall thickness of 4-5 to five mils. The build plate releases with a single screw, and the vat with two screws, one either side. It's worth noting that mine was pretty dusty underneath and I needed to clean it before I started printing. I also cleaned the LCD and for this I used a special cleaner and microfiber cloth. With resin printers, before I pour in any resin, I like to verify that everything is working. So with the vat not in place, I put in the USB thumb drive, which is a welcome addition instead of an SD card and located nicely at the front left of the machine, and started the test G-code file, which seemed to be eight pillars. I powered down the machine to cancel the print, but found when I powered back on, the LCD screen no longer responded to my touches. That meant opening up the case to see if there was anything obviously wrong inside. The main board runs from a 32-bit ARM processor, and I couldn't find any loose connectors, which means when I powered back on the machine, the screen still wasn't working. This did magically fix itself later on, and I haven't had the issue since. I've printed a range of models with quite good results, but before we look at that, I like to discuss my particular testing unit and its relationship to the slicer. This seems to be an early machine, perhaps pre-production. It has a perforated build platform where others receiving their machines have a smooth plate. Now this printer uses Chi2 box as its slicer. And when I received this, there was no profile set up for the LD002R. This is despite the fact that this model was for sale for paying customers. The solution for me was to use the Photon printer and resin profiles, and then to rename the .photon file to .cbddlp. Midway through my printing review, a new version of Tutubox came out with support for the LD002R. This profile outputs .ctb files, which seem to work fine for everyone else on the Facebook group for this printer, but for me, gives me an error. I guess I'm running a different version of the firmware, and I'm stuck using the Photon profile and renaming the file. While these things were frustrating for me, no one else seems to be publicly complaining about it, so hopefully these issues are related to only this machine, and future buyers won't have to encounter them. T2Box is quite competent. It's come a long way since last I used it. You can position, rotate, scale, hollow, and add drainage holes quickly and easily. You can also add manual or automatic support, and then add, subtract, and edit them as you see fit. It's a good solution and is more beginner friendly because it's supported by so many different printers, which means it's going to be easier to find tutorials and help. 
onto my printing and all of these models you see here were printed at 0.05 millimeter layer height. The first model was this Shoggoth and you might have seen this in a previous video where I tested the Creality CRT 3D scanner. This was a big miniature from a board game which I scanned, cleaned up in mesh mixer and then reproduced as the first print on this resin printer. And I was quite pleased with the results, especially considering the time I had to put in to clean up the model in mesh mixer. I couldn't really notice any defects. In fact, my only complaint was where I removed all of the support on the underside of the model. From here on in, I tried to print the type of objects that people normally like to do on these budget resin printers. And I started with a 28 millimeter miniature Dewolf. I set the Chi2 box support to light and you can see it was close to failure in some places. But fortunately, this didn't affect the quality of the final model. And as far as I can tell, all of the detail has been reproduced as you would hope. Now I'm quick to admit that I'm not a fan of removing support from resin 3D prints. And I had a glorious discovery, a support free category on my mini factory. And most of the models from the rest of my review came from there. I printed them flat to the bed, which made them hard to pry off with one of these models even receiving a tiny bit of damage but that was a risk I was willing to take to have a smooth workflow and great results. My next print from this category was this Dragon Chess Set Rook. This one already came with a hollow version, which saved drastically on resin. And again, it seems to have printed really well with a lot of fine detail on the bricks and the texture on the dragon scales. Next up, a resin printer classic with this mini Eiffel Tower. Now you'll notice down the bottom, this was close to failing, but that wasn't the printer's fault. As the printer only shipped with 250 mils of resin, partway through I poured in some old Monocure 3D to keep the print going. You can see where the color changes from that point, and no, there wasn't any issues with using that resin, it was just that I didn't mix them thoroughly together because I poured it in partway through. At this small scale, the printer seems to be at its limit for reproducing all of the little struts on the tower, but perhaps I'm being harsh because it still looks great and quite detailed overall. Next up was a pair of slightly bigger minis, both support free from my mini factory with a vampire theme. They also printed nicely with no distortion, no broken pieces, and all of the fine details intact. Something else people like to print on resin printers is jewelry. So I downloaded a selection of three rings and ran them at the same time. The smooth sections of these rings are just that with invisible layer lines and all of the details are there where they're needed. Another tick for the print quality. Next up, something a little bit bigger with this Darth Vader bust. The texture on his cape is really nice with a great amount of detail, but on the head, you can see a little bit of vertical banding. This is another one that I hollowed out to save a lot of resin. A lot of people like to print the hollow spiral staircase rooks, so I printed a small variation on that with this twin castle edition. This is yet another print without any visual blemishes. The staircase and the double helix on the inside have both been printed without fault. My final print was this lattice torture test, and I consider this another flawless print. With your attraction dialed in really well, it is possible to do prints like this on an FDM printer, but it's never gonna have the same smooth surface quality as what you can achieve on a resin printer. So that was my printing, and here's a summary. The print quality is great, better than the cheaper, longer orange model that I reviewed a little while ago. I'd say it's on par with other printers in this price range, and there's a reason for that. These machines are all remarkably similar. They all have a color touch screen. They have probably the same 2K screen. Their build volume is pretty much identical. They generally have linear rail guided Z axis and a similar UV LED array. They can all use various resins and with Chi2 box, they pretty much all use the same slicer. So let's focus on some differences for this printer. For instance, the carbon filter fan. I was pretty skeptical about this. In fact, the weights attached is quite wobbly. So I figure it wouldn't really seal but I did leave the printer running with the fan on in this room for an hour or two and I couldn't smell any odor. And it seems to do something because when you take off the lid, a big wolf of resin smell enters the room. I really like the fact that it uses a USB thumb drive instead of an SD card and the placement is quite good at the front left of the printer as well. The last thing that stands out to me is this quality cover. The one on the cheaper longer machine did the job, but this is just a lot more robust. So would I recommend this printer? Assuming my issues with file formats and my temporary touchscreen failure are related to this being a pre-production unit, then yes. Although I would say again that its results seem on par with most of the other printers in this price range. So perhaps it comes down to whatever one is on sale at the time. I understand, however, that it is from Creality and sometimes people have brand loyalty or just want to stay with the brand that they know from their other printers. So in that case, I don't think this one will let you down. 
If you've got any questions or feedback on this printer, please post them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy resin 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.